Hello friends, this video on aldehyde ketones carboxylic acid part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We'll take some numericals on aldehyde ketones chemical property. An organic compound A with molecular mass C8HA0O forms orange precipitate with 2,4 DNP reagent and gives a yellow precipitate on heating with iodine. So let me just draw this. I have an A with molecular formula whatever given and it gives orange red precipitate with 2,4 DNP region that means it is either aldehyde or it is first methyl right? but DNP it's either aldehyde or ketone. The next it says it gives yellow precipitate on heating with iodine, right? So uh, heating with iodine, so we have this, this is methyl ketone. So we have discussed this also. So it is giving yellow color with the uh, iodine, it has to be methyl ketone. And it neither reduces tolerance reagent nor filling reagent, right? So if it is not reducing tollen or filling, that means it is what? It implies it is ketone because aldehyde will easily reduce this weak reducing agent tollens and fillings, right? Also it does not decolorize bromine water. That means no decolorization, that means it is aromatic ring. Correct, because if you see C8H8, high lot of unsaturation is there. So either it is a double bond or it is a ring. If it is a double bond, it will decolorize bromine water. But since there is no change in bromine water, it means it is a aromatic ring. Right? On drastic oxidation with chromic acid, it gives carboxylic acid B. So if I take chromic acid. Chromic acid and drastic condition is obviously it's ketone, so drastic condition it give you B and that is not acid. And the formula is C7H6O2. So we have to identify compound A and B. See, the first thing is pretty clear that it is an aromatic ring and it is a ketone, right? So with this, it is a ketone and it is aromatic ring. So what is clear to us is it is aromatic ring and ketone. So let's draw benzene first. So benzene will take how much C6H5? So I have C8H8O. From there you remove C6H5. What you get is C2H3O. Correct. So let's draw a ketone. Since it is not early here, it is a ketone. So it has to be something like this. Correct? From both sides. So this C2 is done. Oxygen is done. And three hydrogens. We have to put three hydrogen here. So this is the compound actually. A. This is my A compound. Why? Because A is aromatic. A is ketone. And A has a formula C8H8O. And with this three information, this is the compound we can draw. So A is acetophenone. So if A is acetophenone, we can easily find what is B. Correct? So B will be what? Acid. Correct? You oxidize this, it becomes acid, this benzoic acid. This is my B. That is benzoic acid. And let's confirm this with the formula. C7H6O2, this is C7 carbon, 6 hydrogen and 2 oxygen, correct. This is C7H6O2 as given. So we have got this compound. Correct how we approach from the first 
data dnp we found is either aldehyde or ketone from second data we found it's methyl ketone from third data we found it is ketone so it is confirmed that it is and from uh, bromine water we found it's aromatic ring so with this it is saying that it is aromatic ring and methyl ketone and with this formula c8h8o and with this information we could find that it is acetophenone So we have to arrange this compound in the increasing order of their nucleophilic addition reactions. Let's first draw the figure ethanol. What is ethanol? Ethanol will be I'm just drawing in this fashion. Ethanol is meth, eth, yeah. This is my ethanol. And then propanol. Propanol. Meth, eth, propanol. Correct. And third is propanone. Meth, eth. Pro, propanon and then we have butanon with, with, yeah this is butanon now if i see this so the nucleophilic addition right it all depends on two factors one is steric hindrance and second is plus i effect so which one has this least steric hindrance do you think the least steric hindrance, I think, is my ethanol, right? And then is the propanol because see this side have hydrogen, hydrogen, so my nucleophile can easily attack this carbon. And out of these two, this is the first two that is for sure. Which one has the least I effect? Ethanol. Why? Because ethanol will give only let's suppose some electron to this carbon, and this is. This is a methyl group, and this is a ethyl group, it will give more electron to this carbon. So, this carbon will be more positive. This will be less positive, right? Because, see, by default, it will have slightly negative charge, and this carbon will have slightly positive charge, right? Slightly positive charge. This slightly positive charge will be compensated a little bit by this methyl group, and this slightly positive charge in this carbon will be compensated or by, more by this ethyl group, because this is a bigger chain, right? So this, this will push more electron towards this carbon. So this will be less reactive. This will be more reactive. The first reactive is what? Ethanol. So I'll write ethanol. So this is done. And the next is propanol. So that is also done. So now between these two, this is pretty easy. If you talk about steric hindrance, also this has more steric hindrance. Here both sides have methyl group, here ethyl and methyl. So by that parameter also you can see that this is more reactive, this is less reactive. Or also by the I effect you will see that this has I effect by two methyl group, this has I effect by one methyl and one ethyl group actually. This has more I effect. So this carbon will be less positive. Since less positive, it will be less reactive. So the next will be propanone. And then butanone. Correct, hope you understood. See, we will see steric hindrance and plus I effect. So with this we found that this is the order. The next is I have benzaldehyde, I have para toleldehyde, nitrobenzaldehyde, acetophenone. First, let me just draw the structure of these. Benzaldehyde is my this benzene, the aldehyde. Then I have para toleldehyde. So I have a toline and then at para position, let me have a aldehyde. Then I have nit para nitrobenzaldehyde. So this is a nitro group and I have a benzaldehyde here. And then I have what? Acetophenone. So acetophenone is this. Correct. So out of these three, this is my ketone or that's aldehyde. I already know aldehydes are better than ketones, right? This is last, that is sure. This is taken care. 
this is the least reactive right because these the steric hindrance also if you see for these three nucleophile can attack easily because there's a hydrogen space is there for these at least the nucleophile attack is a little difficult because i have a ch3 here right so it will not give space for nucleophile to attack so acetophenone is least that is for sure so we can ignore this now correct that is done now i have to find which one is best out of these three correct so we have to now see so when i compare these three if you see that till this part is all same in all three right this part is all same the extra part is here i have no2 here i have ch3 and here i have nothing that is the only difference now if you compare these three no2 is something which withdraws electron ch3 is something which gives electron this guy is neutral, not doing anything. So, in this carbon, to be more reactive, the more positive it is, the better it is, right? Then it will become more reactive to nucleophile. So, if NO2 is attached, NO2 will try to attract electron and will make this carbon more positive, and this carbon will become more reactive. If CH3 is there, it will try to push electron towards this carbon, and with this, it will become less positive, less reactive, and it is not doing anything, so it will be all the same. The, the national position. So with this, if you compare these three, this is least and this is most, right? So this is my most reactive. So let me first put para nitrobenzaldehyde. Let me put this number one. This is number one. And then I told that this will be number three out of these three. Number two will be this because here it is doing nothing. Here CS three is giving electron. Here NO two is taking out electron. So this is number two, and this is number three. And we already discussed acetophenone is number four. So para nitrobenzaldehyde is the most reactive out of these three. Correct. Now we have to predict the output of the following reactions. So I have a ketones here and it reacts with HONO2 in presence of H plus medium. Let's see what happens. Let's try to see what will happen. See. This will get slightly negative charge and get slightly positive charge. Correct? This is how it is. Since it is H plus, this will attack this H plus. So the first step will be this is my OH, and this carbon will get a slightly positive charge. And I have my NH2OH. Nitrogen with the lone pair of electrons will attack this positive carbon. Correct? Till now it looks things looks fine. After that, what will happen is it will attack and let's see what happens now. So since this is OH and there will be N H H O H. Now since carbon has given electron to this carbon, nitrogen has given this electron to this carbon, nitrogen develops a positive charge. Correct. Since nitrogen is an electronegative element, it is not happy with the positive charge. So it will kick this any of these OH and H. So if H OH goes, it will go as OH minus. So it won't help nitrogen. It will be great or a more positive charge. If H goes, H goes as H plus. So with that, nitrogen will get rid of positive charge. So this H bond breaks and this H plus will now attack this oxygen because oxygen has a lone pair of electron so with this let's see what i get so with this i get oh and h since oxygen has given electron to this hydrogen oxygen gets a positive charge and i have n and i have h and i have oh nitrogen is happy with the lone pair now if you see h2o positive we have seen so many times the very bulky it will go off and carbon will get a positive charge so we have minus h2o in this case so with this we will get carbon with a positive charge and nitrogen H and OH. Now carbon wants to get rid of the positive charge. What it can do? So it can either kick off one hydrogen from itself, right? Or if nitrogen kicks OH from here, it will get a negative charge and negative and positive will form a bond. Double bond is always stable, right? So it will always form 
try to form double bond which is more stable so OH will kick off so OH will kick off in this fashion nitrogen sorry in this fashion yeah No, OH will not kick off. If OH kicks off, it is a problem. If OH kicks off, it will give a positive charge. I want negative charge on nitrogen. To get negative charge on nitrogen, hydrogen should get kick off. If hydrogen gets kick off in this fashion, is H plus, nitrogen gets a negative charge. Correct? Please understand here. See, if OH goes, OH goes with OH minus, then this bond breaks in minus and plus, nitrogen gets positive charge, which is not good. Nitrogen won't like it. If H plus goes nitrogen gets a negative charge because H plus N this bond breaks has plus and minus correct so H plus goes off and nitrogen gets a negative charge and this negative and positive charge forms a bond it's a double bond between this and OH is still there so this is the output and this nitrogen will again have a lone pair so this is the expected output of this reaction Similar reaction here, if you see NH2Z kind of uh, format, this also happens in H plus medium. The first thing that will happen is this gets a negative charge, slightly positive charge. This O will attack this H plus and this gets a positive charge and this nitrogen has a lone pair of electron, it will attack this particular carbon. Right? So with this, what you get is, let me draw here. This is OH and in this I have NH2 NH with NO2 here and NO2 here. Correct? And since this nitrogen has given electron nitrogen to this particular carbon nitrogen develops a positive charge which it will never like. So what it will do, it will kick out one of the hydrogen. So if you see the hydrogen is something like this here. Right? So it will kick out one of its hydrogen to get rid of the positive charge because nitrogen is an electronegative element. Right? And this H plus will be attracted by this oxygen. Correct? And this will become H2O plus similar to this H2O plus. This H2 plus will go off. So this will become H2 plus this. Let me draw this figure. O, H, H, oxygen with a plus sign and N with H, N, H and then yeah, this is what you will get. So now H2 is a bulky group. It will come out on its own and with this this carbon will get a positive charge. This will come out on its own and this carbon will get a positive charge. So with this what you get is this guy. Carbon with a positive charge, nitrogen with a hydrogen, again nitrogen with hydrogen here and then with Ni, this is nitro and this is NO2. Now this carbon also wants to get rid of positive charge. So one option it has it if this nitrogen leaves this uh, breaks this bond and hydrogen goes off nitrogen gets a negative charge a negative and positive form a double bond double bond is always stable so they will do it hydrogen goes off and this positive and negative will form a bond so with this the product you will get is something like this they'll form a double bond and then I have an H and then I have this benzene ring with a nitro group here and one nitro group here and that is the output correct thank you visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos you can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website you can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website Thanks a lot for watching.